Hi, in this video we're going to review the org section of the Flows and Release Managed Solution. The org section is where under Flowsome you take all of your sandboxes, your test organizations, and all your production orgs, register them in Flowsome so they can then be used for all of the different activities that you can do in Flowsome, whether it's deploying code from, deploying code to, doing comparisons, uh, merging changes, uh, we even support scratch orgs. So everything you want to work with you will register here in this view and then it's available to you from the Flosum solution. So what an org document looks like. We give you some information about the org on the front page. Uh, you can see we have code coverage report. We allow you to configure code coverage scanning of all organizations at whatever frequency and time you desire. It will then report where that code coverage is and if it drops down below the Salesforce requirements you very easily can go in, select your code coverage and go in and look at that particular class uh, and correct that so your code coverage numbers will be back up. We give you all deployment history to this org. This is a production org so we will show you everything that has been deployed here through the Flosum solution. So you can see we have a deployment history link. We have pass or fail. You can click on this link. You can go into the actual deployment. You can see your success log. And that will tell you everything that happened during this particular deployment. So everything that was updated, everything that was added or deleted will be visible in this log. Now if for some reason it failed, you'll click in here go to the same location and then you'll see in the error log what exactly caused the failure so this appeared more than once so I need to correct that before I can do my deployment we have the ability for you to do uh, a detailed audit trail of this in any org so this being a production organization, if you want to ensure that nobody is making changes directly in this org, you can turn on the audit trail and it will capture all of the changes that are being made in here, whether it's by an automated process or whether it's by somebody doing a change directly in this org. You can use this information then to address any developers who are making changes directly in this organization if that's something you do not want to allow. From a flowsum point of view, we can allow you to really lock down your orgs with a set of org permissions. You can assign these independently to any org or sandbox and you can have as many people in these different roles as you need. So this being a production environment, all of my developers will be given this view only role. This allows for any developer to take code they are working on in their sandbox and in some compare it with what is in production so they can see any differences. They cannot merge any changes into this production org. They cannot deploy any changes to this production org. It is truly a read-only role for the code that's sitting in your production organization. The developer role is something you would assign to your lower orgs and sandboxes if you wanted to specify specific users for each sandbox and test environment. You can use a developer role to segregate those environments and set that up. The validate only allows the person in this role to validate all deployments to this org to make sure there's no errors so when it's handed off to the release manager who is the only person that can deploy code here they should have an error free deployment and as stated you can have multiple release managers multiple validate only whatever you need in here now you have the ability to do uh, what we call a scheduled snapshot so if you want to take a picture in time of your organization you can do that and see how it changes over time. Uh, within this snapshot, you'll see it has a, a list of all the components that were um, captured. We'll have the logs about the, the jobs that were, you know, about the, the snapshot that was created. And then you can go in and see some general information as far as what is in this snapshot, so how many metadata, etc. You do have the ability to download this snapshot. So basically you can download a complete copy of all the metadata in your org 
uh, to a zip file and store that somewhere for an emergency backup. That's something you need to do. Uh, when I downloaded this particular org with its you know, 841 metadata items, etc., it was just under 2 megabytes in a zip file. So we really compress these components uh, as much as we can when we store them so it's taking up minimal storage. Some of the other things you can do in orgs, uh, when we have a sandbox org, so this represents the sandbox dev2 that I'm making my changes in. You can set up Flowsome to automatically get those changes and track them in this organization so all of the latest changes will be listed here. So it makes it very easy for you to add these to a branch and start deploying them throughout uh, the Flowsome solution. So you can go in and you can select an existing branch if you have one. Or you can go in and create a new branch on the fly, so to speak. I then can go in and to find all my components, I can break it down by component type. If I want to add just Apex classes, I could do that. Or I can go in and do a text search. So if I want to find everything with the prefix Zumba on it, I can find all the components here that have Zumba. And I can select all of those. commit them to my branch. We do some double checking. If this was a existing branch, we would look for any conflicts, but this is a new branch, so we have none. So we're going to select all of these and commit them to our branch. And very quickly, it'll come back and you'll see it is now in my branch number 0024 and you can see it's my demo branch that is everything that we can do within an organization record thank you